what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. First of all, because I'm sitting inside of my brand new salon, Chop Theory. I'm super, super excited for today's topic. As you guys can tell, there is a echo in here just because I don't have like music playing or anything like that. It's just me sitting inside of this empty room. So I apologize for that. You guys are just going to have to bear with me in today's video. But for today's topic, I'm actually talking to you all about my journey, all the way starting from cosmetology school to sitting on this couch of my very own salon. So you guys have asked a ton of questions throughout the years of my whole entire journey, my process and how I grew my business and things like that. So I'm going to be talking to you guys all about that. I have my notes here actually on my phone so that way I don't forget anything. And I'm just really excited. So if you guys are interested on hearing about my journey with hair, with the salon, with business, all of that, then let's just go ahead and get started in today's video. I'm gonna start from the beginning and that brings us back to my senior year of high school, which I believe was six years ago. So crazy to think that. I feel so old, but um, senior year of high school was when I decided to take this career route and pursue it with cosmetology um, and go to cosmetology school. So senior year, I made that decision because my teacher, Ms. Dura, shout out to Ms. Dura if you're watching this, um, I do have her on Facebook and I thank her every day for what she did for me. Um, but she saw my passion and my creativity uh, just with art and all forms of it. I would sit in school in my class and just braid all of my friends hair i didn't have many friends but the friends that i did i would just sit there and braid while the teacher taught i would do it in gym class i would do it before school i would do it after school i was just known as like the person who would braid people's hair i don't even know how i learned to braid but i just always wanted to braid that's one thing that made me happy and whenever it came time to filling out college applications and everybody committing to colleges and deciding where they wanted to go i was just kind of in the background, not really saying anything or doing anything. And that's when Ms. Dura was like, I think that you should go to cosmetology school. I think you should at least try and tour it. Um, I thought it was kind of silly because when someone would say like, you should be a hairstylist, I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Like that's, I don't think that's a job. Like I never pictured that this would be a career for me. I just knew that I loved makeup. I watched makeup tutorials day in and day out. That's all I wanted to do was sit on my computer, look at makeup, play with makeup, anything and everything beauty is what my life was consisted of outside of high school. So when she told me to go tour a Veda Institute here in Charlotte, I decided to go. And because I had gone through so much bullying in high school for like the way that I looked and the way that I dressed and the makeup that I wore and the crazy hairstyles that I did, I kind of felt at peace when I went to a Veda Institute and just even just a tour just saw how creative people were and that they wore winged eyeliner and they wore crazy blue eyeshadow and they had really cool hair and I just felt like wow I think I found my space where I'm not weird or I'm not judged and I don't feel um, crazy for wearing blue eyeshadow or purple eyeshadow or pink eyeshadow so I told my parents that I want to go to cosmetology school and I know they were pretty disappointed. Um, my dad and my mom didn't have like some crazy career paths where they were like medical or anything like that. So they just wanted me to have a better life than what they have had. And so they wanted me to get an education. They wanted me to go to college. They wanted me and my brothers to go to college and just do something more than what they were able to do. And so when I told them that, my dad was just kind of like, I don't know. And I told him, I'm like, that is the only thing I want to do with my life. That's the only thing I like. That's the only passion I have. When I think of like dentistry or medical or um, bioengineering or anything like that, I just, no, like none of that is my passion. I don't care about math. I don't care about science. I don't care about any of it. I just love beauty. And so that is when my dad ultimately was just like, okay, you're gonna go to cosmetology school. If you say that's what you wanna do, then we'll make it happen. So went to Aveda Institute and when I was at Aveda, I had like probably the worst experience. If you guys watched my things you should know before cosmetology video, then you know that. I will link it down below if you're interested. I do have quite a few people still watching that pretty often, but that was my experience with that. It just, it wasn't great. I had a lot of drama there too, but I knew that I wanted to pursue my passion. So I knew it was just something that I had to suffer through. And I will still say it, it's just something that everybody has to suffer through. I don't think cosmetology school in general is the greatest thing in the world. I think it actually sucks, but 
It's just something you need to do to get your license and just move on out of there. So I graduated cosmetology school a year after I graduated high school and I had found a job with a salon here in Charlotte. I'm not gonna name names. It was commission-based salon because when you leave cosmetology school and you try and find a job, you're either gonna find a commission-based salon or you're gonna find a booth rental or a suite rental. Um, and so with commission base is basically where people go directly after cosmetology school. I can't really steer you in which direction you should go into because I haven't done commission like full on and you guys will hear in just a second. But commission, basically they bring your clientele, they're in charge of appointments for you, they supply all your supplies, your color, um, anything you need, they supply it for you and you just go to work and then you leave work and you're hands off. Um, and then you just get a cut of what you made that day. So whether you get like 40% commission or 60% commission or 30%, whatever it may be, it's different for each salon. But most of the time you do also have to go through an assistant program, which lasts anywhere from six months to two years and you get paid an hourly rate and you're just shadowing and they're teaching you in classes and doing blow dries and things like that. So that is the commission based version and then you can go the booth rent version where you rent a booth you're in charge of your own clients you're in charge of your own taxes you're in charge of your own hours um, supplies rent everything like that but you keep 100 percent of your profit so it's kind of a trade-off between the two but you ultimately decide which one you want to go to when you're trying to find a job as a hairstylist so when i left cosmetology school i got offered a job at a commission-based salon in charlotte and like I said, I'm not naming, naming names because I'm not going to start drama, but I had gotten the job there. I graduated cosmetology school and during the time that I was waiting to get my license, I had been training there for I think it was like a week and the owner had told me that I needed to go through training and their assistant program, which was, you know, that, that's just the process of it. It sucks because you go through a year of cosmetology school and then you go through, you know, however much time of the assistant program, but it's just part of the process. And so what she had told me is that she needed to fly an educator out to Charlotte from wherever they were based out of and they were gonna teach me for a couple of months and I was gonna shadow people on the floor and I was gonna do blow dries and I was gonna assist the owner. Um, and I was supposed to be in charge of the flight and the hotel and the food and the education of everything coming from that person that was educating me, which I thought was a little strange because normally they pay you to be in an assistant program, at least that's how it, always work so so at the time i was only 19 so i really didn't understand where she was coming from i was still living at my parents house so i asked my dad to basically set up a meeting with her and just ask her how much money i would be paying because she said i wouldn't have to pay her back all at once and that she could take it out of my paychecks and it would be this awesome process and i figured out that a lot of the girls that are actually at that salon paid her back for years even though she was taking it out of their paycheck. I mean, she was talking like $3,000 one month, $4,000 this month, and it was me giving that money to her to find an educator for me. So that just didn't really make sense. So my dad came with me to a meeting, and if you guys know anything about my family, we are foreign. Like my parents are from Mexico and Israel and all these other things, so we are very cultured, especially my parents, and my dad has an accent and sweetest man ever, I love my dad so much, but he went in and just basically asked her, you know, how much money is she paying? Why is she paying this if she just paid $20,000 for an education at Aveda Institute, one of the best schools in the country. Aveda Institute is like supposed to be like the top of the top. So he was confused, I was confused. Anyways, her response was basically, I don't know who you think you are coming into my country and my business and questioning what I do. Okay, all right, I mean, that just speaks for itself. So I was basically like, F you, I'm out of here, don't talk to my dad that way. My dad is very polite, so he was just like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I was just trying, and she was just, oh my gosh, she's psychotic. There's, I mean, I can't 
I can't say enough bad things about her and her business and the way that she runs it. So after that racist remark, I was like, okay, I quit. I'm leaving. I don't need you. And her response back to that was, your daughter will never become anything in this city as long as I'm in charge of it. And I was 19 and that was my first job ever. And that was my first commission based salon and it lasted about a week. So I was like, I'm leaving and I'm gonna go make a name for myself. Goodbye, thank you. Um, and from then on, I was like, I'm not working for any commission-based salon, screw that. I want my own name, I want my own brand, I want my own clients. I'm going to kick ass, okay? So in between the process of trying to figure out where I was gonna go and finding my booth rental salon, I ended up um, just doing like house calls for hair. Like there are so many clients that I still have today now here at the salon that I used to shampoo their hair and their toners and everything in their bathtub and hair i did a lot of house calls i mean i was trying to cut hair in everybody's bathroom everybody's kitchen anywhere and everywhere i was doing my clients i did have my license at the time so i don't technically well, i don't know that might be against the rules but that's what i had to do when i was like 19 and i ended up finding my perfect booth rental salon but during the time that I was doing house calls and after graduating from cosmetology school, I did make my hair Instagram. So I had my personal Instagram and my hair Instagram and that's where I would post everything that had to do with beauty, any of the makeup that I did, any of the hairstyles, hair colors, cuts, all of that stuff. Um, that is something I definitely recommend for all of you, as you all know, is to have a business page, a beauty page, something just to show your work and show your clients what you're capable of doing. and. That definitely helped me a lot. So when I went and found my perfect booth rental salon, I had basically had a job with Autobell and Smoothie King. So two other jobs while I was doing booth rental because I wanted to make enough income to at least pay my rent there. And I knew, God, it was so difficult, you guys, because I had to learn how to manage my books on my own, how to do taxes, how to do getting clients i mean business marketing all of that stuff and i was just 19 like i had no idea what i was doing but i researched the freaking crap out of it and i blasted every single client that came into the salon i blasted their hair on my page on my personal page on my facebook i mean i it was known to North Carolina that I was doing hair because I was just all over Instagram all the time about it. And that is the biggest marketing tool. And if you guys do not take advantage of it, I promise you, you will not grow your business at all because Instagram is the key to marketing now. It is free marketing. And if you don't take advantage of it, you guys, I don't know what you're doing with your business because it's, it's key. So like I said, I was working at Autobell, the car wash and Smoothie King and trying to do my clients, just trying to bring in as much income as possible. And if you guys know me, you know, I'm a huge saver. I am really, really good with saving my money and investing my money um, in the right things. And so I had saved as much as I could for the slow months and the slow weeks. I mean, there was times where I would make like I don't know, $50 that week, but then I go to Autobell and go work to pay my rent. So when you're doing booth rental, don't be afraid to go get another job. If you need to go do bartending at nighttime and go be a hairstylist by daytime, then you go serve those drinks, you go serve those tables, you do what you need to do to pay your bills. But I went to booth rental because I wanted to make a name for myself here in this city and I definitely did and it was because I was able to hustle, hustle, hustle and that was the most important thing. I was not giving up. I mean, there was months where I would make like $200 in hair. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. The first year that I did booth rental, after my taxes were paid, after my products were paid for, after all the hair that I did, after not charging enough, I made a whopping $0. Literally at the end of the year when I paid my taxes, because you don't pay taxes by the day or by the week, you pay them either quarterly or at the end of the year and I was only 19, I had no idea what I was doing and luckily I knew how to save my money because at the end of the year after I paid all my taxes and after all was said and done, I made it out with zero, like with nothing. <laughs> my profit was zero, like net profit, everything zero. And I was just kind of like, wow, was that even worth my time? Do I keep going? Do I give up? Did I make a mistake? Do I go to college? What do I do with my life? And my dad just basically told me, Frida, when businesses first start, you're either at zero or you're under. 
there's never really a time when your first year of business is over zero. And if it is, you go girlfriend because that's amazing. So I decided to keep going and keep posting and keep growing my business and taking all the clients that I could take, never saying no to anybody, no matter what the situation is. I was on YouTube every single day teaching myself. I was going to classes teaching myself because most of the time when you're in commission-based salons in the assistant program is when you learn everything and I knew not that much. I did not know a lick of what I know now and I studied as much as I could on YouTube, on Instagram, with blogs, with online classes and courses and different certifications. I mean, I was in my computer every single minute of the time when I was not in the salon because I was trying to build myself up as a stylist. I was trying to do research. I was trying to find the best techniques for my clients and I still do that. I still go home, even after 12 hour days, I go home and I watch a video on how to do full foil. You know why? Because there's never just one technique for everybody. I'm not really gonna go full into detail onto how to grow your clientele or tips and tricks onto building your business and things like that because that could be a whole separate video since this one's gonna be so long. But during the whole you know, second year, I was just trying to figure out how to build myself and how to make more money. And of course that goes along with like raising your prices, but if you raise your prices, you could also risk losing your clientele. So I don't think I actually raised my prices until like year two and a half or something. I, I know my first year, I definitely did not raise my prices. I was not qualified enough to raise my prices. The first year of Booth Rental was basically figuring out hair in general, figuring out how to do hair, figuring out timing, figuring out the business, um, saving money, things like that. So I just knew after my first year and seeing that whopping zero dollars, I was like, okay, something needs to change. So basically my second year of booth rental was more so trying to be consistent with Instagram and trying to post a lot more. So I was trying to take a lot more pictures, um, trying to show a lot more different colors. So, you know, browns and reds and blondes, just showing people what I'm capable of doing and putting my work out there but more often because I feel like sometimes especially with how flooded Instagram is and how many people that we follow people tend to just scroll by because they forget but if you're consistently posting you're consistently in people's face about it then you know they're gonna want like it, it sparks something in them to want to book an appointment because it's like a reminder for them so anytime that I'm on Instagram and I post even just something about like Halo Couture my extension that I sell here at the salon automatically if I post just one Instagram story, I'll have like six people that are like, oh, I want that so bad or oh, how much is it? It'll just spark the conversation. So just putting yourself out there. And so that's what I was doing my second year of booth rental. And that's when I really started to see business pick up is when I was posting more consistently and just showing how much more work I was doing. Looking in the whole process of how you get from cosmetology school to owning your own salon might look a lot easier than what it is, but seriously, you guys, I was doing three jobs at one time. I was doing 12 hour days, 14 hour days. Sometimes I still do 12 hour days. It's just the hustle. And if you're not willing to hustle, you're not going to make a ton of money in this industry. And if you're not willing to say yes to everybody, if you're not willing to work weekends, if you're not willing to work late nights, then you're never going to grow as a stylist. And those are just the sacrifices you have to make. Right now, I don't have to work weekends and I do work late nights because I don't wanna work weekends, but sometimes you just have to make those sacrifices. Like I will get home at 10 o'clock at night so I don't have to work on a Saturday. And my clients, I have built my clientele to know that I never do Saturdays, I never do Sundays. Don't ask me for any of those days because it's always gonna be no. Um, so I have built my clientele around them knowing that I will take them at five o'clock at night for a full foil and I'm not going to take them on Saturday at eight in the morning. You know, I hustled my tail off so hard in the beginning. So now I can be where I am today. And like I said, if you're not willing to make those sacrifices, then I would not even try because as a hairstylist, you can make a buttload of money. I mean, stupid amounts of money if you're willing to put in that hustle. But if you're not, you are going to make like $10,000 a year, you guys. Like there are some hairstylists that I know have two jobs and they've been in the industry for like seven years. And I have been in the industry two years in and I stopped working more than one job. And that is what hustle and hard work gets you guys. I have never had parents that have handed me money 
for any types of loans or anything like that. Like my dad was not the type to say, here's a loan, build your own salon. Here's your rent for your booth rental. I mean, I had to work my butt off to be able to pay for those things myself. I don't have rich parents, you guys. I don't have the luxury that if this for some reason doesn't work, Frida has to find a new plan, okay? Frida doesn't call daddy and says, hey dad, I need $10,000, can you give it to me? Cause, Cause daddy's not giving it to me, okay? So you guys have to understand that like I started from nothing. Like I said, I worked at Smoothie King, Auto Bell, and Booth Rental, okay? I was not afraid to get my hands dirty in order to pay for my booth rent to get my clients in. So you just got it. My third year was when I actually started to make some pretty decent money, and that's when I started to manage my money a lot better and just started doing uh, quarterly taxes, which is what I definitely recommend if you are going to do booth rental, just because you start paying taxes what your tax person, I'm a CPA, and she basically estimates from the year before, plus adding on a little bit more um, and breaking it into four different payments. So I'll, I think the first one is, well, I want to say like April, second one is like July, third one is like September, and then another one is in January. So you'll have four large payments rather than just one huge payment. Because I think like my first year, I might've had a payment of like $7,000 and that like wiped me out. So it was like, wow, that sucks. I made nothing. So that can definitely you know come back and bite you in the butt if you're not really saving for that type of stuff so when people do booth rental i think their biggest mistake is that they see all this money coming in and they're like oh i just made a hundred dollars i can go spend a hundred when in reality at the back of the head you have to say okay i made a hundred dollars how much of that is going to go to taxes so you just kind of put more aside and that's what i do i've always just been really good at saving my money you definitely don't want to get into the position where you owe the irs money because that is just not something i want to be in so I'm always on time with my taxes. I always pay my full thing. I'm not doing monthly payments or anything. I always do my quarterly estimated and I never, ever, ever forget to do that. That's like a reminder. So that was the most difficult thing I think is trying to figure out taxes and it's still very, very difficult because every year my income keeps going up and up. So even if I pay like $15,000 in taxes this whole year, at the end of the year, my CPA might come back and say, well, you still owe four grand more. So I still have to have four grand more on top of it. So um, just definitely making sure that you save your money is like the biggest key. If you're doing booth rental or suite rental or salon ownership, anything like that, just save, 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 because you never know how much you're gonna owe. Um, and so that basically carried on to like my third year and my fourth year. And my fifth year was when I finally decided, okay, I've saved enough money. Um, and I wanted to make sure because I do pay everything with cash. I don't have credit. I don't do anything with debt. I have no debt. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough money to open up my own space with cash. If you guys watched my video announcing Chop Theory and how this whole thing came about, then you just know that I had this like fire inside of me that I felt like I needed to do more with and I was capable of doing more with. And so I feel like if you're stuck in your comfort zone for too long, then you're never going to actually grow. And that's why a lot of stylists that are commission based, you cap out a commission and a lot of people are comfortable and they don't want to do more. And that's totally fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that. But I just knew that for me personally I wasn't going to be happy where I was at for that much longer and I kind of felt like my drive was going down just because of how easy my career was and how easy it was to make the money that I was making so um, that's when I basically made the decision to open up Chop Theory and it was terrifying I mean it's a lot, it, it's a lot to handle. I feel like the risk of moving from commission based to booth rental is definitely a huge risk, but when you're moving from booth rental to owning your own building, I don't own this building, but like leasing your own building and having your name on it is so different than booth rental because you're paying a heck of a lot more. Like I'm paying a lot more in rent here, but I'm also making a lot more money because I have the hours to make a lot more money. So going into year five of my career and making the decision to open up the salon was a huge risk for me just because of how much money it takes to open up your own space. Like this is 800 and I think it's just 800 square feet. And for something this small, it costed me, I think the end result, I'm gonna be real honest with you guys, it costed me almost $13,000 and I paid it completely with cash. 
So to know that I had to have that money up front because I don't do debt, I don't do credit, I don't do any of that. I save my money from my booth rent and everything with my career, with my booth rental experience, I saved it from beginning until now and I just dumped as much as I could into this to make it my perfect atmosphere for my clients, for myself, for my career and I truly feel like ever since I've been here, I am like on fire. Like I feel like my career is on fire. Like I'm so motivated. I'm so happy and I'm so excited to bring you guys so much more. So that is where I am today. And that is how I basically got there is high school bullying, cosmetology school bullying, <laughs> leaving, getting fired or quitting, whatever you want to call that. Um, at the commission based salon going to booth rental making zero dollars at booth rental hoping that I could build my clientele enough to pay my rent and to Keep on going and make a business for myself to now opening up this salon I mean I had to learn all the in and outs of business of marketing of social media of customer service color lines taxes accounting everything and anything possible at like 19 years old and I'm 24 and I own my own salon and I just, it's amazing. And I'm so, so grateful for where I am today and I'm thankful for all the clients that I've had throughout the last couple of years and all the people that trusted me in cosmetology school, my teachers who taught me, Miss Dura for pushing me to go to cosmetology school. I have no idea what the future holds, but I am excited for it. I'm just taking it day by day. I have a plan. I have so many things coming. And I hope that you guys will continue to follow me along on this journey with my salon now. So thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel. And if you guys have been here from day one, thank you so much. And if you guys joined in the middle, if you're just now joining and you're brand new, welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.